Another season and another reset of the points, but also another visit to one of the favorites of this vintage racing series. Watkins Glen's old cool, old school nature is perfectly suited to IMSA's classic race cars and will not only provide a challenge, but a lot of fun for the drivers. So strap in and hold on as we get ready to watch round one of the iRacing Camel GT series. And you'll see it all live here on the Global Sim Racing Channel. Hi, I'm Joe Peak, and with me in the booth is Sean Ambrose. Behind the scenes is our director, the Dr. Amjad Yaman, and he's using cameras provided by Dougie Beard. Sean, the Glen is easily one of the most popular tracks on all of iRacing. Tell us a little bit about why it's a mainstay for so many series. Joe, first of all, you haven't lived until you've been to the southern tip of Seneca Lake. It's absolutely beautiful here in Watkins Glen, New York. This old village uh, used to use this race course on public roads until 1956 when they built a permanent circuit here. Except for a few changes, the, uh, the circuit's current layout has more or less been the same since 1971. It even came with the crickets. But uh, uh, this 3.4-mile uh, track, uh, 5.472 kilometers of asphalt and concrete, will challenge both the drivers in the Audis and the Nissans today. But the best way to get an idea of what it's like to go around here at Watson Glen is to jump on board the GSRC lap guide and take a ride around Watkins Glen. All right, we've got Clayton McLeod and the GSRC Nissan, so let's do a lap around Watkins Glen. Coming down to the 90, this tends to be a great place to pass. The pitfall is it's easy to outbreak yourself and lose gobs of time on the climb up the hill. That good corner exit will be especially important in this car, where you can easily stay flat to the floor up through the S's. Minimize your steering input through here to help get every last ounce of speed as you hit the back stretch. You can see how we're absolutely flying up at the top of the hill. This is another place where passes are likely, but it's going to be hard to outbreak someone into the carousel because of the incredible amounts of downforce in this machine. That and the banking of this long bend really create some incredible cornering speeds. Switch sides quickly and then get ready for the shoot. Things will go wrong fast if you lose it here because there's very little runoff to the outside. From there, we come to the bottom of the hill and the toe of the boot. This corner rewards the savvy and punishes the greedy. It's a steep climb on exit, so anyone who isn't able to square off the corner for a good launch will be hurting on the way back up. That will give the drivers yet another good opportunity to overtake when they hit the heel of the boot. The exit here can get a little narrow though, so leaving each other space will be important. Switch sides once again so that we can return to the main circuit. This crested off-camber left-hander is tricky no matter what car you tackle it in. Be wary on the power since the turbo lag can send you spinning into the barrier in a flash. Then comes Indianapolis. This is very much a single groove corner and any side-by-side -side action through here is breathtaking. We finally hit the last corner, which is more like something out of a street course since the tire barrier is right at the edge of the track. Hopefully, you've kept it all together and have now finished a lap around Watkins Glen. That should give you an idea of just how hair-raisingly fast these sweeping corners are here at Watkins Glen. Not a lot of sharp corners uh, at this track. So, with last season done, let's take a look back at how the stand uh, standings wound up, starting with the prototype Drivers' Championship. Olenek took it away by a mere five points by his Finnish uh, rival, Ardo Iamaki. And Jamie Hall, of course, was in the mix but just couldn't bring it home. He slips down one position uh, away from Ardo in the end and finishes in third with Fabian Gerber wrapping up fourth. Just uh, didn't have the attendance that he needed to try and take this one home. Plate McLeod gets a nice fifth place finish. They also have a team's championship that they do uh, in this series. So looking at the prototypes team's championship, Oh, excuse me, Prototype Lights uh, is uh, the other championship that they run in this. Uh, Luis Emerton, what a great job he did last season. Just edging out John Keefe by a mere three points in the end. But uh, Luis earned that one. He had incredible speed last season. He was really upping his game. Martin Kreitschrik was a long ways behind, but still gets third with Rugenbrink and Kopak rounding out the top five. Sean, we also have the uh, GTO championships down in the Audis. What did that look like? Joe, uh, the GTO, Michael Houghton, listen, it, it, another great battle 
Look at that Ove trend grade, only five points. Just missed out on it, uh, but out and been strong all season. And uh, Ben Laughter coming home in third. So a couple Americans there and in the top three. Billy Ruola, uh, maybe just a missed race or two is really what hurt his chances of finishes fourth. And then our buddy Phil in and around the lake finishes out the top five in the GTO standings. And now we'll look uh, here at the junior division here, the GTU standings. And Riley Thompson with an impressive season. Finishes first, Frank Scurry with a with also with a very impressive season, finishing there in second. Uh, the new guy, Reed Miller, Canadian, having a good uh, season. Third for him, Brian Shanahan, fourth, and Hideki Koivitsa. But only 61 points separated the top five. It was a very competitive season. Certainly was. We saw that in pretty much all the championships. It remained incredibly tight all the way down to the wire. Now, of course, we have the race details for this race. If this is your first one, good time to join here because we are on round one and it is official iRacing racing. So 12 rounds that you will see throughout uh, our coverage of this season. 40 minutes for the race distance. And uh, that means with it being basically a sprint distance, you should not expect any drivers to be stopping for fuel. The setups are open in this series and uh, we'll need to get uh, our art director on that uh, typo there <laughs> that it's been in that graphic for a while <laughs> the scoring there at the bottom is uh, what the drivers get for the various finishing positions in this series so as we start to get some times in on the board nicholas schneider a name we're not used to seeing up at the top uh here looking at the pole for the prototype sean yeah schneider with a hot lap there a 131.6 to put himself on top of i gotta be honest that's pretty fast right out of the box and philip lake with their the, the dirty torts new livery is looking very good putting himself on the pole in the audis as well sorry to cut you off there sean but worth noting that uh phil another driver that we talk about many of them upping their game boy he has really come to the fore yes he has and we certainly uh, know what type of tea he likes now uh <laughs> fabian gerber Back in the blow pun. Nissan. Toughest turn on the course right there, Joe. Yeah, I have always have <laughs> issues heading around turn nine. And it's very narrow through here. Narrow through much of this course, especially here in the final quarter. I always consider this almost like a street course here in the last part of the lap. Yeah, agreed. Yeah, those those last three turns. Very narrow out big time. What does Gerber get there? That's a one good enough for second six. for now. Provisionally on the front row, but Nicholas Schneider showed himself to maybe be someone to watch this season as we watch Ove Trangerade coming off a podium finish in the Lotus 49 just a couple hours ago. Right now he's sitting in fourth here in the GTOs, but change that to the Ooh, pole. Very nice out there for Ove. Wow. Ove says to Philip, I see your lap and I will up you one by about five one hundredths of a second. Vili Rola steals it away when Ove isn't looking. Well, this is fun. Everybody putting up fast laps. Tapani Liluoto. He'll go come across the line here. Let's see what he can do. That's good enough for fourth right now. Oh, that was his second lap, too. He's done. Yeah, most of these drivers just finishing up their last lap. Now, we saw Riley Thompson do very well uh, at the end of last season, indeed, with a win, I believe, uh, in his final race of the season. He does not have a qualifying time, and yet, uh, in fact, this is the only lap I believe he's going to be able to get in because of how long the laps are around here. This is going to be important for Riley. Jamie Hall has jumped over to this class, we should uh, mention as well, as he last season ran the prototypes. Riley's got to find the grip here out of the final turn and make that run flat out to the line. And as he crosses, hopefully this one will count for him. But otherwise, he's starting at the back of the field, and it does not. He must have had an off somewhere. Riley Thompson has got it mm. all to do today. That is not what this driver wanted. Just a minute left in qualifying, seeing if anybody's going to have time to put another 
lap in here. Obviously, Thompson is not going to have enough time to get around. And I'm seeing nobody on track that is able to complete a lap. So our grid is effectively set. Let's go through our starting order. On the pole, as we said, Nicholas Schneider in that number 13, really finding himself able to uh, put himself into the mix with Fabian Gerber starting on the front row next to him. Let's see if he's got better race pace than his qualifying pace. Ryder Anderson is going to be starting in a third with Tapani Linaluoto beginning in fourth. Clayton McLeod will start P5. That's a great qualifying for Clayton, honestly. Same thing for Martin Krejcik. Boy, we keep talking about improvement of drivers. Martin has impressed me here getting on row three. Justin Albrecht will start in seventh. He'll be followed by Michael Kopak starting in eighth. My, Michelle Rugenbrink will begin in P9, and then the top 10 is going to be rounded out by Rob Swindell. Jorge Fernandez Suarez will be starting in 11th. John Keefe will be next to him in 12th position. Richard St. Jean will be, start in 13th. And Johnny Bell rounds out our field of prototypes in 14th position. Etar Sintes Galindo will start behind him as a, he did not set a time. All right, Joe, let's get to the GTOs. Ville Riola on the pole. Ove Trengrade will round out the front row of the GTOs with him. Jamie Hall making his debut there. 17th, or, uh, 17th overall, but that'll be on the inside of row two there. Third place for him. Phil Lake with a great qualifying effort. Rob Olenek there in fifth. Uh, and... Uh, Yuko Lascala with a sixth place qualifying effort. Great job there by him. Nick Bucanos, seventh. David Roth there in eighth. Ninth goes to Michael Houghton. Ben Laughter starting 10th today. Matthew Jett will start 11th. 12th is going to be Luis Emerton. Let's see. Uh, Milan uh, Amosi there in 13th. 14th, Hideki Kuivitso, Brian Shanahan. 15th, 16th, Eugenio Massa, Randall Sherritt there in 21st. Or I'm sorry, in the uh, first, Riley Thompson at the backfield. That effort disqualified. Uh, Antor Galindo and Michael Steiner round out this field today. 34 cars registered for this one. We did not get a split. This is going to be a, a lot of fun here when we get started down to the 90. It's going to be a packed field, but the good news is this is a pretty long lap around this track, so drivers uh, shouldn't be running on top of each other too quickly. As we look through the field, lining up behind the roof pace car, we will get a pace lap rolling start here in this classic IMSA series. What I find interesting, Sean, and we, I talked about at the top of the show, the, the slate being wiped clean and things are new. Well, we're seeing that over in the prototypes. Guys like Schneider up there, Anderson is is up there, and Lina Luoto only good enough for fourth. Wow, I mean, that's a shocker. Uh, but it seems like a bit of the same old, same old as far as the first couple rows in the GTOs. Yeah. Yeah, I, it, the, the cast of characters is is familiar. Uh, nice to see a couple new faces, um, but let's face it, it's Watkins Glen. If, uh, if you're not dialed in here, especially when we talk about some of these drivers and their I-rating, Joe, their experience, their level of experience, uh, if you haven't been around here, well, then you're at a disadvantage. These guys, they've all been around here. Uh, some big news, unfortunately, that is going to affect the race. Uh, apparently, a few drivers having some connection problems. McLeod, Lake, and Olenek have all not been able to grid up. That's going to make life a little bit hard for them. If they can get back in the server and get back into the pit lane, they can start off after the field goes by. But, oh, they've got it all to do. So we watch them work up the long back stretch. One of the more popular places to pass. But, uh, Sean, what's it like in the Nissan heading into the carousel? Because this car is known for it's downforce and it's got to have a lot of speed coming up to yeah. this sweeping turn is there much breaking into here uh, not not much joe it's really more it's more just a bit of lift uh you, you you're really hard pressed to take it flat out especially if there's any traffic around you but man it is it's about as scary as it gets because you're at top speed i mean you are maxing out that nissan heading down there and then of course you've got to get it right 
down here into the chute. So uh, that uh, lot, we see a lot of races in down there. Certainly do. The chute having incredibly little runoff over there. A little bit of paved runoff on the outside of the carousel. So you can sometimes maybe have some saving grace if you overshoot it. No pavement down here into the toe of the boot. Uh, we've seen drivers time after time wind up in the tires on that one if they screw it up. Hopefully we have uh, a number of viewers joining us out here. Maybe they've been able to pry their attention away from the mall just for a moment here for the American uh, uh, proto or, uh, sports car racing that we have, classic sports car racing. Who doesn't love the sound and the visuals of these cars, Sean? Just such a beautiful set of uh, cars out on track and, and just really visceral. You know what? I just feel fortunate that here at GSRC, we're able to bring you all this great retro action. Uh, the Lotus 49 earlier this morning, now the Camel GT, the Lotus 79 is tomorrow. Uh, all these cars are are honestly some of my favorite on the service. And uh, uh, look at the I ratings of some of the guys here. Uh, you can't see that on screen, but trust me, it's a it's a stiff field. And uh, some of the very, very best drivers on the iRacing service here in these retro races that we see every weekend. Yep, weekends on GSRC are certainly vintage racing time. But now it's time for the green because as the roof pace car peels off, we've got our leader up at the front, Nicholas Schneider, with a good jump. And Fabian Gerber slots into line. It's a battle for third behind them side by side as they sort it out with Lino Luoto taking third away from Anderson. Let's go to the GTOs. Well, they got started well before 11, Joe, and uh, Villarola got out to a big jump, but Jamie Hall took no prisoners, got right by Ove, trend grade, trend grade now having to worry about La Scala. And up front, Ruola being chased and hunted down by Jamie Hall as they'll hit the back stretch, look for Hall to get in that toe and maybe make a move down to the carousel. Despite the top two getting a jump, there's a huge pack from third on back. It is tight stuff as we jump over to the prototypes to see they're mostly single file. Very opposite worlds between the GTO and GTP classes as it is just a hornet's nest here for fourth place in the GTOs. I'm not sure if we can get the cameras on oh. them. It's a traffic jam, Sean. <laughs> it is. Dread grade, Houghton, watch out. Oof. Houghton right on the inside there is going to have the position. Lots of grip down there. Trend grade get moved to the outside. He's losing positions really quick here. Bit of a battle for the lead for the GTOs. Villy Rolla having to go defensive on Jamie Hall, but he's not able to do anything with it. We did have a change for the lead that we should mention in the prototypes. Fabian Gerber not only got ahead of Schneider, but so did Lino Luoto. I mentioned his qualifying a bit of uh, uh, mysterious, them only seeing him in fourth but obviously wasting no time getting up to the four. Those guys very much separated, so really the action definitely down in the GTO class. Yeah, and, and everybody's gone line of stern now, but I'll tell you what, uh, Luis Emerton had a close moment with Obey Trendgrade a moment ago, uh, but Trendgrade now down two spots. Uh, he is in chase mode. Emerton. Uh, picked up a lot of spots here on the start and looking good here so far. Side by side Just, action behind them between yeah. Riley and, and uh, Laughter. They get it sorted out once they hit the S's. This is one of those things I think a lot of uh, people might not be aware of. These S's are so marginal for these Audis. Yeah, Joe, they definitely are. I, it's, uh, it's a tight trip up through there and, it, and the car is really on edge. We see a so little bit of action heading down the back stretch into the carousel as they slam on the brakes and get these GTO cars rolled up. We ride on board with ninth place Thompson. That's actually uh, Thompson starting at the back of the field. That is, we're on lap two here, Sean. He is disposed of half of the field in one lap. Uh, Joe, Riley, uh, Riley's got this one figured out. He uh, He's just... He's going to need to keep taking a look at this. He's going to make a move now on Rolf. Could he get himself up into eighth here? He's got a nose inside. Rolf's going to give him the space here. That's good racing, man. That's just good hard racing. 
Groff got to try and find him back on the inside. As they swing through nine off camber corner, Ooh. there is just no answer for Riley Thompson as Rolf's Taco Bell car has to back out. Battle for the lead in the prototypes. Fabian Gerber to Pani Lino Luoto. The Finn looking to see what he can do with the Austrian. Still side by side as they head down into the chute and up ahead of them already hitting traffic with Matthew Jette. Gerber is going to come out on ooh, top ooh. for this one for now. Boy, some fierce stuff here in the early it, stages. It, it, listen, go ahead, Sean. We can go back to Riley Thompson if you want because Yokiro Taco Bell, uh, he is now going to pick up uh, Luis Everton. That's, uh, that was uh, Rolf that uh, had the Taco Bell on his car. Thompson uh, running that. Oh, he's got that. Oh, I see Emerton with the Taco Bell yeah. on his car. So two teammates in uh, effectively one lap just ahead of them. Look at the battle going on. Trangrate with Mukanos and Houghton with La Scala. This is basically a battle for third and a battle for fifth. Tight stuff as they come off the toe of the boot. La Scala around the outside powers his way Boy. forward to solidify third. Rizzi Houghton takes a peek, but he backs out as they break for the heel. Now action between Thompson and Trangray. Thompson continuing his climb upwards. You have to wonder where he would have qualified because already three laps in, he's in the top six. Gerber is not done with Linda Luoto, still fending off the fin. This is some high stake stuff and Schneider with them battling as much as they have has now rocked up to the back of this duo. Barely five minutes into this race and we have seen so much action throughout. Go ahead, Sean. Houghton just getting by La, uh, getting by La Scala, man, and going down to the 90. Now up through the S's and Houghton starting to pull away. His train of cars right behind him. Riley Thompson in that mix right behind La Scala. Ah, Thompson in the top five. Oh, now here comes La Scala. Are we going to see three wide? Thompson's going to force the issue. Go the long way around. He's the bravest on the great hey. breaks. Give him two for one or oh. maybe Yuko tries to come back at him, but he's going to be the outside into the shoot. Look at Ove Trangray now trying to come up the outside of Michael Houghton. People we'll say it right now, Riley Thompson's a bad dude, man. That was uh that was a hell of a move, Joe. My goodness. Just an incredible run, too. He's now on the podium. It's a long ways up. It's five seconds to get to Jamie Hall, who has held it within half a second of our leader. We haven't been missing anything up here. These two, Rolla and Hall, have been line astern. Uh, let's see what Thompson could do with it. Is he looking for another win? Make it back to back? but in two seasons. Hey, listen, I'm going to use it. Someone once said it's a long way to the top if you want to rock and roll, and baby, he is uh, he is on it today. Watch out, Hall and Rola. Riley Thompson's on his way. Boy, is he ever. I thought that this would be just a difficult race for Thompson, but he has not let anything face him. And already the drivers behind him getting line astern yet again. I'm sure it'll all erupt once more in it to the carousel. Speaking of which, our leaders and the prototypes getting ever so close. They're coming to finish a lap here soon. Lino Luoto continuing to hound the Austrian. Pretty clean race here so far, Joe. Uh, not a lot of contact, and, and boy, we should feel pretty fortunate. Oh, Schneider in a big accident. Multiple cars getting involved in it. Good Nicholas say, Schneider man. out of the penultimate turn. Who was that that got into him? Mike Kopak. Oh, poor Mike just had nowhere to go. And and Suarez, who, remember, started from the back. He was doing such a good job. Spun mm -hmm. it in avoidance. You're going to see that's Kopak in the red Momo machine. And the orange and black is Suarez, the number 17 that hits the wall. The view from Kopax is going to be a hard hit for the New Jerseyan. 
And Joe, we've got to come back to the lead in the Nissans. Gerber, Lindel Uuto going toe to toe into the chute. Just can't quite pull it off. He was going the long way around and it did not work. Clearly, Linda Luoto's got the pace. Something went wrong in qualifying, but he has corrected. Oh, a big snap coming off the toe of the boot. And look at the time that it cost to Pawnee, but he catches it. Oof. You talked about the clean racing. It's It's been exciting despite it being clean. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it has. I just picked it in an opportune time to start talking about that, unfortunately. I see Michael Steiner seems to have had some problems as he's uh, exited the sim. Not sure what happened to him. We'll check about uh, out that in a bit. Martin Kratryk, in the meantime, got himself in the top five. He's showing that this qualifying is no fluke. This is a driver that number 22 tends to be a little bit farther down the pack, even though he was competing for the AM championship. I have to say he's doing fairly well today. Is a uh, that is a solid effort so far, Joe. The lead in the GTOs, though, is uh, I'll tell you what, uh, Hall is about as close as he's been to Rolo in a while. And he took a look, yeah, it's a little bit far back, I think, there in the toe of the boot, just maybe showing him in the mirrors of Vili Rolla. Rolla, known for his speed in this GTO car, and I think Jamie Hall showing that he can not only be fast in the prototypes, but in the low downforce Audi GTO. Drops back a little bit, about half a second behind now. So he's going to have to regroup and see what he can do. The bad news for Riley Thompson is he is still about six seconds back, yeah. so he may have stalled out here at the final spot on the podium. I you know, it's hard to use these cars up because they're so they're so durable, but he, he did make quite a charge. He may be actually having to cool the tires off just a bit, Joe, <laughs> get that car back under him, but uh, uh, he is pulling away from La Scala. And I can say from experience racing this car that uh, you can absolutely wear those tires out. They certainly go away over the course of the race. The battle behind Thompson is really what's been interesting. La Scala and Houghton going at it up the hill. Houghton's going to have a big hole in the air as we watch Tapani and Linda Luoto now in second, starting to come through some of the traffic. Whoa, and Gerber, did he get checked oh, up there? He, Yes, he did. Oh, boy. And it was uh, Ove Trengrade just ran right into the back of him. Come on up the S's. Here we got it on the replay we saw it on camera but it was hard from that angle to see here yeah just all oh, had to get on the binders and Ove did a good job of holding on to that car after she he gets did. a big shove oh and and Gerber hits another car this time it's a prototype that is trying to get a hold of them oh, to oh. Them. oh. we're gonna come back live we we're gonna have to get a replay because Linda Loto got split by two cars coming through as well here we see the live shot. Let's go back to the replay. This was down in the chute. That's some craziness here. He gets checked up now. Gerber, not aware of what's going on, gets into the back of him. Let's watch from above. Now, let's hold on to the replay here because uh, I think this is Kratryk and another driver who go on either side. This is just craziness. Wow. Look at all that traffic coming through. Oh. So well, that, that was, was an Audi, actually. Yeah, that was that. Uh, who was that that uh, picked up? That had to have been damaged picked up there. Saw a puff of smoke. That might have just been the dirt getting kicked up. Oh, Philip Lake is off track. Philip Lake slow out of turn one. What? Well, he just came out of the pits. What happened to Philip Lake? He lost connection. My goodness. Oh, excuse me. That was at the start of the race. So Philip Lake only just now kidding out here. Sorry. I'm trying to keep track of everything as if 
as yeah. you guys are. Well, he did stop at the end of the pit road. There was a lot of traffic coming through. He let the traffic go. Look at the battle on screen, though, here. This is for the lead in the GTOs with... Uh, this is Fabian Gerber coming through, our leader in the GTPs. So we've got our eclipse happening. Gerber's able to get by, and Roll is able to hold on to things. Just barely. Uh, get a little scary here. Watch out. Coming through. Just behind Jamie Hall, there's Justin Albrecht. And Justin has been a sneaky little guy this race. Oh, as he almost loses it. Almost the commentator's curse there. He started seventh. Oh, and having all kinds of trouble with this traffic. Roller goes off with that punt. Here goes Jamie Hall around the outside of the final turn. Gets himself into the lead with a little help from the prototypes. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> I was about to say Justin went from seventh to second. If he races like that, he's not going to stay in second very long. It'll be last in everyone's heart uh, if he keeps that up. But no, man. Wow. Just a tap, but it was enough uh, momentum there to send Ruola off. J.B. Hall now has a lead of about a second, but he's got traffic as well. Yeah. Oh, three wide through here. This. That's Lino Luelto trying to come back through. John Keefe, he gets to funny Lino Luelto, sneaks to the inside of Kratrick, but can't quite seal the deal through the carousel. He's like, are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> oh, as Kratrick slides a little bit wide, Tapani has to get out of it. Still can't get it done. This is for fourth place. Big defensive move down to the inside. Oh, it might have been a little bit of contact. The Finn is having the toughest of time here with Kratrick. He's clearly got the pace, just can't find a way around him. Joe, you know what's really cool about this? If someone's watching for the first time right now, you know what? You can join iRacing and do this for just mere chump change compared to the hundreds of thousands of dollars that they spend in real life to do this. Consequently, millions they spend, actually. <laughs> Absolutely. Especially on a, a, a classic car like this, which you certainly want wouldn't want to wreck the way that these guys are driving them, just giving it their all. Still in a Luoto stuck behind Kraterik, trying to get into the top four. I would not have thought that the Finn would have this much trouble getting by. He might have damage. Oh, no. Contact for our leader. Hall gets hit by... Uh, oh, and it rolls off. And Thompson goes through to the lead. Oh. Who would have thought? Is he going to go from almost last to first here? Well, he's first in a way, but man, it's going to be St. Jean here that gets in the mix. Yeah, just oh, locks him up trying to get to the inside of Hall. And then poor Rola split oh. the gap, thinking he could fit through, and the number seven got into him. Well, Watch for you. Have... These cars are hard to woe up. I almost think Rola had no choice in the matter here. Your momentum's already mm. going this way. Oof, yeah. He he thought maybe he could squeeze through. Riley Thompson now three and a half seconds in the lead. Joe. If How you are up to second. If you are watching for the first time, wow, is he he yeah. almost loses the lead there coming out of the toe of the boot. Welcome to Camel GT. Uh enjoy your stay. There's a lot happening. In fact, our third place driver, who just got overtaken for second, Ryder Anderson. Uh, took that second place. Justin Albrecht blew his engine. Oh, man, we're going to try and keep everybody up with what's going on. So Justin's now in the pits. Our first blown engine of the season. I'm sure that's uh, certainly a footnote oh. that he did not want. Beautiful and livery that, on that car, though. That was uh, that was an ender for Ruola. Ruola taking his car behind the wall, oh, Joe. Wow. Okay, so let's get you up to speed on where our top five in each class is now that hopefully things settle for a second. Gerber back into the lead. Anderson is in a second. Linda Luoto has got himself into the top three, and he's trying to chase down Anderson. 
Kraterik falls back to fourth. Finally, we missed the uh, the, uh, the pass there. And John Keith rounds out our top five. What's the top five in the GTOs looking like? Well, it just settled down, Joe. Uh, but Riley Thompson has done it uh, for now. Anyway, he's come from all the way to the back of the field. He sits here in first, being chased by Michael Houghton, the Texan uh, with a little bit of speed of his own today. Uh, he is up several spots and now finds himself in second, Yuko La Scala hanging on the third, keeping it close with Houghton about a second and a half behind. And then it is back to Jamie Hall with a little bit of damage. That was the car, I think, Joe, that made a little bit of contact. Jamie dealing with some right front damage, uh, but hanging on the fourth. And it's Ove Trengrade, who has uh, had to overcome quite a bit since the start of the race. But he is holding on to that fifth spot now, back up into it. We're going to look at a replay. I think this is Radar Anderson. Is it Radar or Radar? We need to settle that. Radar. We're hearing the Scandinavian coming. Let's see. It's going to be out of the heel of the boot. He seems to suffer from the turbo lag that uh, this Nissan is known for. You can see here the blue powder walls meet the blue paint of that car, unfortunately. Come back live. Well, he was looking at a second place finish. Now it's to Pani Little Luoto back up there. After all that, he gets back into second. But the bad news for him, Sean, is he is about 8.7 seconds back from yeah. our leader. Yep, that's going to be a tough thing to overcome because Gerber right now has got it all to himself. Looking at the car, we did see, uh, uh, when we had him on screen, a little bit of damage on the rear wing. Not significant. Gerber's got his own damage. Looks like the nose a little bit bent on the left side of his car. Viewer's right right now. Okay, Jamie Hall looking to make a move on the Scala. Got him on the back stretch here, Joe. Trying to look the long way around. He's a little bit better on the brakes, being on the racing line where it's been rubbered in. Can he get it done? He's going to have the inside of the chute even if they don't complete the pass, but he does. Nicely done by Jamie Hall. That puts him into the podium. <laughs> yeah, Los oh, Gala going to fight it back here. Oh, yeah, nice run out of the chute. But once again, just a little timid on the brakes. The Finn just doesn't seem to have as good a braking as Jamie. Better be careful. He'll be using Jamie as a brake pad. <laughs> Oh, and he's going to try it once again. Ooh, a little unsteady to the heel of the boot for Jamie Hall. Can't get the power down out of it. Yuko says, I'm going to have that podium spot right back. Thank you very much. And he gets it done. Wow. Good stuff, man. Good stuff. Great racing here in race one. And there's still 18 and a half minutes to go unpredictability is the name of the game don't forget behind these guys Ove Trangere the teammate to Ruola is trying to work his way forward another look to the inside from Hall but backs out of it thinks better knows that he's going to get a draft up the back stretch these boxy Audis punching a huge hole in the air they've got a prototype coming up behind them that's Suarez who is laps down on the leader. He sneaks through one, and I don't think he's going to interfere with this too badly. No move there from Hall, I think now. Oh, he's going to take a peek. Gave it a go, but it just not going to come off for now. He gets a good run off of the carousel down into the chute. Once again, better on the brakes down into the corner. Holds it side by side and doesn't get the run off of it. I have enough trouble getting through there by myself. I don't know that I want to be right next to a car, but Jamie Hall keeps digging here. Ove, Ove's got that popcorn spot right now. I think he's happy there. He knows he's still got a little bit of time. Maybe these two will make a mistake in front of him and he has a shot at a podium. All right, this is settled down momentarily. Oh, maybe not. Jamie hopping it over the curb. All right. Uh, if we could take a glance away, John Keefe is into a podium position. It's not often you see John this high up the field, but same thing with Martin Kraterik. 
He's trying to use his newfound pace to take that podium away from John. Let's see what he can do to that Marlboro machine. Right on board with Kraytrik. Trying to remember what country exactly he races in, because I know it's a Central Eastern Europe club. I have to ask him if we get a chance to talk to him post race. As he follows in the tire tracks of the Nissan of John Keefe, waiting for an opportunity. A little bit of traffic here. That's Randall Sherritt, but doesn't give him a chance for a pick. Randall in that Apple sponsored uh, Audi machine there. And the battle is starting to brew up again between Hall and La Scala. As we jump back to these guys, Ove Trangere getting into the mix. He's got a nose inside down into the chute. Can he get it done though? He's got a car ahead of him. Maybe door to door off there. Oh, and a bad shift it looked like from La Scala as he falls back quickly. Mm. Again, this is all for third place, who's currently held by Hall at the front of this trio. That's Trank Raid in the red, white, and blue machine, and La Scala in the black and or the green and yellow. Okay, so there's this trio, and this battle's been great. There's a battle for eighth, another trio back there of Roth, Emerton, and Quivitzo, and they're doing about the same thing. A couple teammates beating up on each other there. There we see, even in the mid-pack, drivers fighting hard for any spot that they can get. They're certainly going to get chances with the traffic now thoroughly mixed up between the two classes. There's like one spot on track where they aren't right now. The back straight. <laughs> That's it. One car. Lone gap that uh, nobody can really take advantage of. Oh, John Keefe got balked by traffic big time going the long way around of the last corner. And once again, Kratrick just doesn't seem to be able to take advantage. He's brave on the brakes down at a 90, though. He's much closer up the hill this time. I know these cars don't give a big slipstream, but could he maybe pull him in here, Sean? I, I think he can, yeah. Now, how quickly are they going to catch this pack of Audis that they're coming up on? That's the problem. That's Quivisto and uh, Emerton battling side by side. John Keefe a little bit circumspect. Oh, Great Drink is thinking about it. He says, I want to go, but I don't know if I trust these two. And he finally sneaks through as Quivisto gets the spot over Emerton in that class as well. Understand that Tregrade was yes. able to get into third past Hall. Yes, and he picked up not, not just Hall, but got by Les Gala as well. I mean, he took two spots, took him down quick. And now Ove is up to the podium spot, being followed by Hall and Les Gala now. Ove, I, I talked about his struggle earlier. He had a horrible start to this race, Joe. But it's all coming back to him now here late. Use the slipstream. Slingshotted past. And I think that was Gerber going by as well. There, waiting patiently. Speaking of which, why don't we take a peek at our overall leader. Gerber deserves some screen time with the run that he's had. And Lino Luoto at about eight and a half seconds back does not look to be hassling him. We've already seen though, Sean, you just do not know what is going to happen in this race. So I, if I was Gerber, I would not be counting my chickens yet. Yeah, well, that's that's one leader passing the other leader right there as he gets by Riley Thompson. And, and you talk about not counting your chickens. Well, Riley shouldn't be one to do that, but he has continued to open his lead. So he's got great pace, and he seems to have great focus right now. Both drivers uh, look to be on their way to wins here with about 12 and a half minutes to go. Indeed, and with that time left, both of our leaders probably just eyeing the clock every once in a while, counting the seconds down. Linda Luoto trying his hardest to gun down Gerber, but just does not seem to have the pace with the damage that is on the rear of that car. Good news is he has 4.7 seconds over third place and does not look to be being caught by John Keefe. So he can at least think that second place is likely for him. 
You go Scala in the hall. Battling here. That was into the toe of or the heel of the boot. And Kratrick, oh, tries to get two in one corner. Thankfully, oh. Hall saw him coming. Runs out of road, gets turned around as Lascala gets into the back of him. Boy, that was a progression of, of worry that ended in tears for Kratrick. He's still trying to get turned around as we watch the replay. He's going to get it up on the curbs, and, and this is what really, really gets it messed up here, Joe. Progression of Worry. That sounds like a good book title to me, Sean. <laughs> well, Martin Kratrick is going to have to read up on some notes after this race, unfortunately, because he just threw away a good chance at a podium and slots himself back down to sixth. The good news for him is that's where he started from. I guess good news and bad news is, is the other story of the day besides unpredictability in this race. You know, Joe, Ove Trendgrade has managed to track down Michael Houghton. There may be one more here in Trendgrade's ride today. With ten and a half minutes to go, he's got plenty of time. Remember, he started second uh, in this group of GTO, so I'm sure he'd love to get back to where at least he began the race and sort of limit the damage for the championship. And, and speaking of starting positions, uh, if we could give some credit to John Keefe, he started this race in 12th, Sean, sitting in third yeah. now. The driver behind him, we really haven't, I don't think we've given any screen time that I can remember. Rob Swindells started in 10th, sitting in fourth. A nice little climb for him, the number yeah, 14. It, it has been, and I'm glad you noticed that because we, we hadn't mentioned him at all. And honestly, I don't recall ever seeing him here in the Camel GT. So welcome aboard and uh, uh, come on back because so far, so good for you, buddy. And, and I have to say, wonderful taste. Look at that classic Porsche livery on that uh, Nissan. Always a favorite of mine, that old Miller scheme. Yeah, really, really cool. But, you know, Keith, you talked about Keith. I, honestly, I, I associate Keith with bad luck when I think about Keith. We've seen him <laughs> so many times just have his race taken from him because of one thing or another. And, uh, Today, it's been a great charge through the field and, and uh, great pace that's kept him uh, here on the podium. Uh, I, I tell you what, uh, get through these last nine minutes and uh, I hope we get a shot to talk to him. John, is, is your desk made of wood? It is not, Joe. Oh, okay. But I have wood right next to me. Okay, give it a knock because uh, you just talked about the good job that John Keefe is doing. So I just... I, I want to see him finish in this position <laughs> after you praise. There we, there we go. All right, as we look at the battle for eighth year in the GTOs, this is Coivisto and Roth. And as well, they've got, uh, well, that's Clayton McLeod coming through, but Luis Emerton, that's all a battle for position between these three and the Audis. Looks like they're left to run their races, McLeod is working his way back forward. He was one of the drivers that lost connection and fortunately is multiple laps down. Gonna stay line astern as they climb the hill towards the heel of the boot. Cuivisto, your leader of the three in the black and yellow car. The first of the Taco Bell machines with the black top is David Roth. The green top, Luis Emerton. Turn nine, holding tightly. Roth probably looking more in his mirrors than he is through the windshield at this point as he continues to drop off of Cuivisto bit by bit. Man, they have got me so craving about half a dozen tacos right now. <laughs> it's almost lunchtime for me, too. It's, uh, yeah. yeah. Down into the 90. Not a lot of action among these three, just a tense bit of a pressure cooker waiting for one of them to make a mistake maybe trying to use the draft here up the hill one most likely to get a good run is going to be Emerton as he's within the slipstream they get to the top of the hill now does he have enough to get him before the carousel and I think looking at the way he's not closing in the answer is no 
Team orders, Joe. I'm, I'm going to go with team <laughs> orders. Oh, and uh, eighth in the prototype. Switching hands as Jorge Suarez tries to make up for what was an unfortunate incident as he had to avoid an accident coming between the penultimate corner and the final corner. Uh, he's about a second behind Rich Richard Saint-Jean. And I think he might be able to get one more before all is said and done. Is uh, 1.7 seconds a battle? Can we call that a battle yet? Because Ove is still closing on Michael Houghton. With now a little six far away. To go. All right. We'll, we'll wait. <laughs> well, they're going to have an interruption pretty soon because uh, remember Clayton McLeod yeah, is comes. coming through soon. But here's the thing. McLeod is on the same lap as them. So they're not going to get a, bl a blue flag when he comes through. They got to keep an eye on their F3 box and be very aware now. Oh, Suarez made short work of Saint-Jean. He's already up to seventh. Despite not getting a qualifying lap in, I think Jorge has pace. Oh, no. And it gets oh. hit what yet again. That was the Audi of Hideki Coiviso who loses two positions from that. And Richard St. Jean plowed into the side of him for good measure. Stuck his nose in where a gap just was not going to be. Watch on for the number 17. Joe, that's net code. There was no contact there initially. I, that's what I'm seeing on my screen, and it, you almost see it there on the replay. I, I think that that was a disappearing gap, though. I think even oh, if it was net code, it was yeah. going to happen. It, it probably was. You're absolutely right. Oh. Oh, and Jamie Hall having some more problems. Uh, he's got to be wondering what could have been here. Yeah, he's All the way lose. down at 11th now. He's, he's actually going to get too wide out of the chute. And then he loses it there. Right in the middle of the track. Oh, that was close. Was that Mukanas was getting through there. And, and the bad news for him is that uh, he was in such a narrow part of the track, he just couldn't get turned around because there was traffic coming through. Yeah. Four so, minutes left on the clock, Joe, Sean. Joe? Yeah. Ove Trengrade is now under a second. It's eight tenths. Coming out of the S's, they're going to hit the back stretch. He is just about to the edge of the toe here on uh, Houghton, or at least getting in the draft. That was what I meant. Not We're not in the toe yet. We'll be there in a moment. Two toes, one with an E, one with a W. But here he comes. Here comes Ove Trengrade into the carousel. Boy, got to run. It's Norway versus Texas here. The Cowboys versus the Vikings. Oh. So oh. what? <laughs> Did I touch a sore spot there? Uh, so, <laughs> Ove, the Vikings, yeah. Ove continues to close in. Those tents are ticking down as he gets closer and closer to Houghton. He's not going to have many laps to do it. These drivers turning laps of about a minute 45 here. Just under three minutes left to go on the clock. Two laps to go, most likely, depending on where the leader is. Well, whatever Obey's done to get here, he just needs to keep doing. Uh, but getting around Houghton, we've already seen Houghton be defensive a couple times in this race. Ove is not just going to pass. Well, and that's what's going to make it even more interesting, because I know Ove is a hard charger. He is not afraid to get aggressive. He's very close now. Don't expect him to make a move into the 90, and you can see he is going to stay right behind him. He knows that he is close enough. He should get the toe up the back stretch. What can Trangere do? This could be his last opportunity. We'll find out. They get up to the top of the hill. There's nobody around them. It is just these two cars together. In one of the few spots on track where there's no traffic. He looks to the inside. Can he get it done? Down towards the carousel under braking. 
They're about dead even as a little bit of a slide on entry, but it is done and dusted for Trangrade. Now, can he pull away in time? Ooh. Oh, now when he opens the, the door. Inside. Can he get him back through there? Not quite. Now we see him go on the defensive. Ove was not expecting that attempt so soon. Could we see an over-under potentially? Here comes Houghton trying to put the power down. You can see just how wide he swings it, and he gets a great run on him. Down to the heel of the boot. A little bit better on the brakes for Ove Trangerator. Is it too late on the brakes for the Norwegian? Side by side, down to turn nine. This is going to be supremely tough, uh, tough for him to hold around the outside of this corner. And he can't quite do it. Finally, Trangerator is ahead. But I do not think Houghton is done with him yet. I don't think so, Joe. And here comes just behind them. They've got a, a Nissan, the Johnny Bell. I think Johnny be able to clear him here on the front stretch. Let's stick with this. But a side note, Gerber is coming to take the white flag in about 10 seconds here. So uh, he should be able to catch these two. Yeah. yeah this is going to be the last that... lap. He's going to get by Yuko Lascala there first. Or I'm sorry, that was Richard St. John. There we go. There is our leader. Still watching by. the battle. Houghton, he's within the toe, but I think he's a little too far back here, Sean. I don't think he's got an answer for him. Not, not into the carousel. No. No, he's going to have to get it done somewhere else. Yeah, trend grade really strong that time. Out of the carousel. Nice momentum. Down to the shoot here. Houghton break it hard. But boy, it's just not enough. That kills his momentum off the exit. Moving in their mirrors is our race leader. I think he's going to get them. It depends. He's got a 6.3 second lead over Linda Luoto. It has come down, but he's probably simply managing the gap. Does he sit sure. and wait behind, trying not to get in the mix of them? Yeah, he's not going to catch them in a good spot right now. Oh, boy. He's got three corners left. What's he going to do? Is he going to give them one more lap to duke it out? Or is he going to pass them by? Here comes Gerber. Through the penultimate corner. He's going to get one of them. Oh, no, no. He's going to wait. He sees that it's a battle. Oh, he's going to no. take... No, no, no. He's no, waiting. No, he's he's waiting. going to back off. Fabian Gerber takes the win in the prototypes and lets our battle for second place continue. Great move by Fabian. Boy, he had he had an important decision to make there, honestly. <laughs> I think he was probably looking at his F3 box, just making sure that Tapani wasn't close enough to steal it from him in the end. Well, the problem for for poor Mike now is though is boy he lost a lot of ground just overall that uh, the last couple of turns of of uh, the, the white flag lap were just before uh, the finish start finish line I know what I wanted to say Ove's pulling away is really what I wanted to say that's that's trouble we will catch Riley Thompson crossing the line what a feel good story this is for the Mid-South driver is he still competing in the AM championship did, or did they bump him up since he won the AM Championship last round? I, I don't know, but we're going to find out. <laughs> we'll bring that information to everyone here just as quick as we can. Absolutely. Through the heel of the boot goes Riley Thompson. Didn't get a lap time in and qualifying. Probably saw a mountain in front of him, but he put on his climbing gear. That number 16 wheeled its way through the field. And with just one more corner to go, Riley Thompson. He didn't start in dead last. He might as well have, though. He's going to take the win here at Watkins Glen. What a drive by Riley Thompson. Ove Trangrade gets himself second place. And Michael Houghton takes a podium. Well, I'll tell you what. I love the contingency placements on that Riley Thompson car. Sir. Congratulations to him, man. What a what a day.
With that, we're going to take a break here on the Global Sim Racing Channel. Don't quite leave for Lamar yet because we do have driver interviews as well as the official results. And then on screen, you can even see all the upcoming races here on GSRC. Welcome back to Watkins Glen. We just watched the opening round of the Camel GT series. If you watch that race, I really hope you've caught your breath. We certainly had to. It was just nonstop action for the vast majority of it. And Fabian Gerber was able to come away with the win. He did get on uh, the chat after the race and apologized to Tapani for the bump that he gave him that basically wound up giving Fabian the win. Uh, just said that he could not see what was going on in front of Tapani. Tapani did rally back and get a second place. So good finish for the Finn. John Keefe did consolidate that uh, podium finish. John, I hope you come and talk to us because uh, I don't know how often we really get to talk to you for a podium finish. Rob Swindells gets a fourth place with Michelle Rugenbrink finishing in fifth. Going from ninth, that's a good run from him. Cray Tariq, oh man, he's, he's got some speed now, but certainly needs uh, some work to do in the race uh, order. So he finishes sixth today. Johnny Bell going from 14th to seventh really didn't give him almost any screen time, but he deserves some credit there. Richard St. Jean finishes in eighth with Mike Kopak coming home ninth. And rounding out the top 10 is going to be Clayton McLeod, who was put on the back foot by a disconnect right during qualifying. John? Joe, boy, in the GTOs today, it was all about Riley Thompson. And guess what, folks? Uh, he is competing now in the uh, the higher division. So uh, this will be your points leader, Riley Thompson, coming out of today. Obey training grade with a great job to fight back at the end and, and claim this spot on the podium after getting, I think he was as far back at seventh at one point. Third, going to go to Michael Houghton, a great drive for the Texan today, losing out to Trend Grade there just at the very end of the race. Yuko La Scala falls a little short today, but we'll finish fourth. Nick Mucanos, fifth. Ben Laughter, sixth. 
Seventh, David Roth. Hideki Kuivitso with a decent run, actually. Comes home in eighth, ninth, gonna go to Luis Emerton. Jamie Hall in 10th, 11th, going to Milan and Ossi. And uh, Randall Sherritt there in 12th. And uh, Matthew Jett uh, will finish uh, 12th, 13th in class. And 14th in class, going to go to Eugenio Massa. Jorge Fernandez Suarez will finish 11th in the Nissans. Rob Olenek uh, today, he will uh, take 15th in the GTOs. 16th, going to go to Phil in and around the lake. They had disconnection problems early. Uh, Brian Shanahan, 17th. Uh, let's see, Radar Anderson, who had trouble in the race. He'll finish 12th in the Nissans, 13th in the Nissans to Justin Albrecht. Ville Riolo will finish 12th overall in, uh, I'm sorry, 18th in uh, the GTOs, 14th to Nicholas Schneider in the Nissans, 19th to Michael Steiner and Altor Sintes Galindo will finish 15th in Nissan's 34 cars in this race today, Joe, and boy, it was a fun one. I bet it was fun for Riley Thompson, who uh, we're going to talk to real quick. Winner in our GTO class. Riley, are you as shocked as everybody else probably is at that win? Yes, I am. So talk to us about what happened in qualifying. I saw that you only got one lap, and, and fortunately, it looked like that one didn't count. Uh, I assume you had an off were you one of the drivers that suffered from a, a disconnect or, or how did you uh, wind up only getting that single lap? Um, so I ended up doing the out lap and starting that first lap and then hit the wall and the S's on that lap and just decided at that point when I was going to complete this, when I was about to come out of the pits again with a new car, I decided I'll just disconnect from the sim and afterwards see if I can get, can get a lap in. So once I completed that, it just came to as no lap because the cue bar the whole time was just being weird and the servers were being weird. Oh, that is incredibly unfortunate. Well, you made lemonade today, that's for sure. Uh, climbing your way to the front, we saw that you managed to pass half the field on the first lap. How in the world did you do that? Because we didn't get it on screen. Was it just taking advantage of situations or did some cars have some problems that you snuck around? Yeah, um, ended up, there was one guy in front of me when I started, he didn't get as close to the field, so I was a decent amount behind them, which helped me get a run on them through the final turn, and then with the characteristics of the, characteristics of the track, he just kind of, we just kind of got into that pack and made quick work of it somehow. Now, last season, uh, you were competing for the uh, amateur championship, uh, are you still in the AMP Championship this season, or did they bump you up uh, to the uh, the pro level? I got bumped up. Okay, so, well, you're already on a, a, a good charge to try and take that championship. Well, do you think it's possible to take back-to-back -back championships in AM and pro for you? Unfortunately, not for this season, because unless there's more drop weeks added because of reasons like this, um, the U Series will run, the playoffs of that will run during this, so I won't be able to run in like the final four weeks of this. Oh, that's disappointing. You clearly are a major player already here in the Camel GT GTO class. Well, thanks for coming and talk to us. Congratulations on an incredible win. Well done. Thank you. That's Riley Thompson, winner in the GTOs. And uh, Podium, another driver, another feel-good story, John Keefe, surviving all the chaos in the prototype. Sean has caught up with him. John, start with telling us, how did you survive that chaos to get to the podium? Uh, I don't know, but this is like, um, this feels like the biggest win I've ever had uh, getting a podium <laughs> here today. <laughs> and listen. Can, you guys, uh, can you guys hear me okay? Yeah, no, we can hear you fine. I'm going to okay. be honest. There was a moment in the race where I said, you know, I'm used to I'm used to associating John Keefe's name with bad luck because yes. it just you always seem to just have the worst of it, man. And uh, uh, but today uh, the seas parted and and you had just a great drive. Uh, uh, really, what was the key to get to the podium today for you? Uh, I well, first off, there was some connection issues that a lot of guys were affected by. Um, so I honestly have to credit the podium to that because there was quite a few guys that uh, dropped out quite a few times and came back in. Uh, but with that aside, um, yes, just staying out of trouble the entire way was key. 
Um, and I actually did have some bad luck there towards the end. There was a little confusion uh, with me, and I believe it was Masa in the Audi. And um, I actually got into the wall, got some damage. So I was actually sweating it out the last five laps there. <laughs> so Because I had some damage, and uh, fourth place was coming quick, but I held him off in traffic right at the end. So it was it was epic. It really was. Martin and I had such a great race. I don't know how much of you guys caught that, but it was amazing today. Yeah, no, no, we we, we did catch it uh, in, in that fourth place car you talked about. That was Rob Swindell's, a, a driver that we've not seen before here in the series. And he had decent pace today, too. So, uh, yeah. but John, just a, a great effort here at Watkins Glen. What a great shot in the arm, a great way to start the season and great momentum heading into week two. Absolutely. Watkins Glen is my spiritual home racetrack. So anytime I do well here, I get pretty, pretty stoked on it. So this one feels pretty good. <laughs> well, man. Hey, again, congratulations. We'll see you next week. Yep. See you guys. All right. That's John Keith. Uh, great podium finish for him today, Joe. And you've caught up with Michael Kopak. Oh, yep. We've got Kopak <laughs> with us. Unfortunately, finished ninth today. Mike, we saw the big incident that you had coming up to the final corner. What's your take on that? Do you think you had any chance to try and avoid it? Mike, can you hear us? Yeah, I don't think, I don't think Mike was uh, tuned in with us there, Joe. Yeah, it might have had a few issues. Uh, so we'll talk to Mike next week then, unfortunately. Didn't have the best of days. Maybe he was uh, just... Uh, trying to cool himself down after that. We're going to close up today in that case. We want to thank the Camel GT community for coming back for yet another season. They started it off with style, that's for sure, as uh, some drivers might hope for a better second round, though. So uh, thanks to the companies that provide the software and hardware for our broadcast. You can see them listed here on your screen. And additional thanks go out to Eric Eckholm and Casey Lalonde, who provide our wonderful music. See the screen for how to get a hold of more of their great work. Thanks to the team today, Sean, Amjad, and Ducky. If you'd like to find out more about GSRC, including upcoming races, you can find it at globalsimracingchannel.com. We're also on social media. We're on Twitter at GSR Channel, uh, Facebook at Global Sim Racing Channel, and Instagram at GSRC underscore Cram. Don't forget to head on over to our YouTube page. There's a big red button there. You'll want to hit it. It says subscribe on it. When you do that, you'll get updates with all of our races so that you don't miss a moment here on the GSRC. Next race, we're going to a much shorter track, but still very difficult, Phillip Island. That'll be Saturday, June 23rd, 1 p.m. Eastern. We also have upcoming races for other series listed on the screen, so check those out and mark them down on your calendar. Don't uh, stay up too late watching Le Mans, or if you do, make sure that you don't have work the next day. However, until next time, race clean, race hard, and we'll see you on the track.